In this video, I'll be doing a stress strain analysis on my made up basketball. So, where do we start off? Let's start off. By looking at our little diagram here. Uh, I'm going to start off with saying that the circumference is 29 inches and I've come up with um, a modulus of elasticity for rubber which is rarely linear but um, for this example I'm just going to assume. I also came up with a uh, Poisson's ratio and I've also come up with a typical thickness of rubber film that's used within uh, indoor basketballs. We also, um, I just from a good old Wikipedia, looked up some typical pressures that you'd fill a basketball with, and uh, one of the sources said 30 psi. Please don't criticize me on any of these details. I don't know if uh, it's super accurate or not. So, first off, uh, since everything's made in China, uh, we're going to have to convert that 2 millimeters to inches. So, I'm going to just let, you know, just assume that I know how to do this part. It's going to be one zero point zero seven uh, whoa, zero seven five or seven nine, how about inches. And that's just to keep us within the same system so we're not uh, over complicating anything. So first off, before we dive too deep, this is our little diagram. Uh, around it is a little arrow describing the circumference of the basketball itself. But I kind of wanted to draw, maybe maybe I'll just draw another little diagram over here in black. And what I was really hoping to do is try and stretch your guys' concept of how to analyze this basketball. Um, we could analyze it with a square, like, DA surface, so just like a tiny little section. But it would look something like this. And since this is kind of in a global system, nothing really, it doesn't make sense to use a square to analyze something that's in a global coordinate system. So if we were going to analyze this skin, I'm actually going to pick and choose what kind of shape I'll use to analyze a uh, portion of the skin and I'm gonna choose just a simple little circle so if we were to analyze this the first step is is do we analyze it by little by section by section or do we just try and come up with some general assumptions that can make it a little bit easier for us to analyze well one thing I can note is that when I split the basketball it is symmetrical in both the X and the Y planes. So it might be smart of us to analyze right here in a circle. You can still use the same coordinates, X and Y, but uh, just realize that any results we get will apply also to the Y coordinate. So if we solve for X, that will also apply to the Y. So it cuts down the math. So the first thing I would like to do to our basketball is let's imagine that we took a sword and we cut it in half. And I know that's not exactly in half, so you're going to have to forgive me. And inside that basketball is an exaggerated interior. So let's just call this 
the air, uh, you know, the chamber, the air chamber right here in yellow. And then in pink, we have our film. So what we need to realize is that the air chamber sitting at 30 psi is actually pushing in all different directions on the surface of the basketball. And you realize that if I wanted to do an analysis at say a point like this down here at the bottom, if I wanted to do an analysis down here I would need to be able to tell you what portion of that is in the X coordinates. Because we don't want to have to solve for both Y and X. So what we would actually have to do if we were going to do this the long ways we would take okay over here we would we would break this this one down to to the x coordinate of this force and this one is already in the x course but then over here we would take a portion of this and break this down into the x that's just a lot of work to do but by making that assumption that we did by cutting this off what we can actually do is cut our work in half. Let me scoot over here and I'll draw it again. With a half circle, and then you have your film. What you have here, once again, here's your chamber. from this point here just the inside oops the inside of the film to the inside of the film this would actually form a small circle if i can draw it in 3d let me let me try embarrass myself over youtube if i could draw this it probably look something like this then you have your interior film, which I'll draw on maybe like a light blue of some sorts. There. That's fine. The PSI would actually be pushing back against the other half of the basketball in this area. So I'm going to call this area, area I. Let's just call that area I. Foof. Area I. Okay. And the area O, because that would be the interior area, the area O is simply going to be the total cross sectional area of the basketball itself including the film. So if we were to walk ourselves through this basketball, we could come, we need to come up with both these areas so we can tell how much cross-sectional area the rubber is actually contributing to. So let's look at a cross-sectional diagram, I guess. So it should look something like this. Exaggerated thickness. And I'll put our little film color in here just so you know. So we need to calculate the outside area first. Well, we know the area of a circle. And that's going to be pi r squared. So area O is equal to pi r squared. Well, we've, we've got to calculate out uh, our r first. So let's do that. We have our c is 29. So c is 29. Let me zoom in. 
Okay, the circumference C is equal to 29 inches, which equals d pi. If we calculate our d, we find that d is going to be equal. nine point two three inches which I always like to put it in radius so we'll just say radius is equal to four point six one five now realize that that is actually R O outside Okay. Well, if we do something similar to the inside, because we need to find out what the interior radius is, uh, we actually already know the film thickness because that's what we determined right up at the top here, 0 0.079. We can just subtract it off of our radius that we just calculated, right? So not only that, Ri is equal to 4.536 inches. So now we have both of our numbers. With that, we need to calculate both the areas and that way we can figure out the forces that are being applied onto the rubber. So, if I just calculate it out for us real quick, A0 is going to equal pi r squared, and I'm just going to put the equation and the results because you guys know how to do this. Pi r squared is equal to we have 66.9 inch squared that's for the outside area and for the inside area we just have 64 Point six inches squared. Perfect. So now we have both the areas. Let's figure out what the area of the rubber is itself, which is just the difference between outside and inside area. So area of what I'm going to just say R is going to equal 66.9 minus 64.6, which is going to be 2.3 inches squared. So that's how much cross-sectional area the rubber is actually utilizing to fight the force of half the basketball, to actually hold the force of that half of the basketball. So, now we need to know how much PSI is within the basketball, and then we know how much of the rubber is being used to hold back the basketball. So, let's calculate that out real quick. Over here, let's switch to red. We know that the pressure is 30 PSI. And we know that the air is within the rubber, so that's actually, you have to utilize the inside area. So force that's being applied, I'm going to say force that's being applied, is going to be 30 psi, so 30 what pounds per inch squared, right, psi. 
multiplied by the internal area, which is actually 64.6 inches squared. And that equals a total of 1,938 pounds. Now this is how much force that 30 PSI is putting on half the basketball. So literally, if I were to draw this, it would be this way, that much force. That's where our force is being applied. And then the other half would be, you know, due to all the different surface forces all adding up in the X component. There you go. So now we know that we have 1,900 pounds being applied. We have to divide that by the area of the rubber, which is just above 2.3 inches squared. And that's how we find out how much PSI the rubber is actually retaining. So we do 19, 38 pounds all over 2.3 inches squared and that equals 842.6 PSI. Now that's a pretty interesting number because we need to know Maybe we wanted to know, okay, how, what, what kind of strain that skin's going under? Because we know the skin is under 842 PSI. What kind of strain is it going under? And so what we use is we use our modulus elasticity to come up with how much strain it's going under. So E in the X direction is going to be 842.6 all over 7,500. which is just the modulus elasticity and that means it's going to be 0 0.0562 and that's the strain. Now that does not mean that that's not the total um, amount of growth the circumference will go we would just have to multiply that number by 29 inches and we could do that but I mean you, there's a whole lot of things you could do I just wanted to try and show you how you could come up with a stress strain uh, analysis on a basketball which is uh, kind of an abnormal thing to analyze and I thought it'd be fun to discuss um, I know there's a lot of little drawings here and I hope you guys can forgive my lack of art ability um, ask questions, and uh, I will hopefully be able to answer them. Have a good day.